Okay, good evening, folks, and welcome to another segment of Cayman Mar Road's um, live stream chat. Thanks very much for tuning in. Um, just wanted to let you guys know that we certainly appreciate you participating in our live stream events. Last, uh, today is now Wednesday, so on Monday's live stream event, and by the way, for those of you who are just listening, I wanted to advise you that um, we took your feedback. We appreciate you certainly giving it to us last week and on Monday, and we took your feedback that, you know, you wanted sort of a more consistent time frame. And then a lot of you also indicated that you preferred to have the, um, the evening segment available. So we have um, decided that every Monday and um, Wednesday at seven, we will be having our live stream events. So again, thanks very much guys for participating. Wanted to update you as well that um, I'm just having a just having a look at some of the comments in relation to this live stream event because comments are already up that we can feed through here shortly. But anyway, um, so the, the event on Monday was very, very successful. Thanks Noel for coming in and spending some time with us on our live stream studio. We had 51 people tuned in at one point in time. And of course, tonight is another exciting night. So let's go ahead and get started. What we're going to be discussing tonight and bear with me because of course, uh, we've got some new Fandangle tools that we can utilize here including uh, screen sh sharing. And I'm going to share our screen with you to show you a few things by way of evidence. So we're gonna be talking about this concept of naming and shaming, so to speak. Um, Giselle Johnson, you know, the story is out there. If you're not familiar with the story, let me just do a little recap to bring you up to speed. So on, let me just pull up our story in Cayman Mall Road. Earlier in the month, we did a story about Giselle having been arrested um, for allegedly stabbing an individual at um, a vicinity in the in, in a plaza, sorry, where, um, what's the name of it? Cotton Club is located, right? So um, Giselle apparently took offense. Hi, Melanie. Thanks for tuning in. We got some people locally and overseas tuning into the live stream tonight. Um, Sheila has joined us. Thanks very much, Sheila. She's overseas as well. So just give me one second. I'm going to pull up the story so I can read essentially what the story said. But the story just detailed the fact that Giselle had been arrested. Now, Giselle has taken the position that she should not have been named. Um, she's put it out there, her and some of her friends, that she was actually um, the victim in this situation and not the person who ended up getting stabbed. So I want to put things in context in terms of what transpired, because one of the things I think that is extremely important is that we are honest in our dealings as much as possible, right? So I'm not trying to out Giselle, but I'm trying to put the facts out there so that we can all be on the exact same page in terms of what transpired. We were contacted, and a lot of times this is how a story will go down. Someone will contact us and say, hey, I've got this story. This is what happened. In as much as possible, we try to verify the information with the authorities. A lot of times the police arrest persons and they do not even put out a press release that an individual has been arrested at all. We can assume that there are times when they get busy. We can assume that, like they've said, some things are just not in the public interest. So the fact that someone has gotten arrested, they don't think is necessarily something that we need to know. So they have a very discretionary um, process by which they operate. I'm just adjusting my monitor here so I can see some of your comments when you guys start commenting. And I think that that's very interesting. And we are going to talk about that in just a little bit as well. And why Cayman Mall Road has taken the approach that we have taken, which is essentially to name everyone that is arrested if we can. And I will explain the logic and the reasoning behind that and why I think that honestly, it makes really, really good sense. So Giselle, um, we were actually contacted, just give me one second, cause I wanna pull up a few things here um, that I've got on the computer. So we were initially contacted by someone and I'm going to read you the message. It actually came in on Instagram. The person contacted us on Instagram, Facebook, and also um, sent us, I think, an email 
regarding the fact that her son had been assaulted, right? And that he was now, um, you know, fighting for his life uh, at the hospital after being stabbed twice. That was the version of the story that we had, but I want to read it specifically to you so that you guys can get all of the details that we received and then understand how we proceeded and why the mere fact that Giselle is now in a position to say that we didn't contact her, we didn't get her side of the story is not really the truth at all, okay? So I'm not trying to call Giselle out, I'm just trying to present the truth for what it is. And when you have the truth on your side, there's absolutely no reason to run from the truth. So we have 100 people tuned in right now to this live stream event. Thank you guys so incredibly uh, much for tuning in. Let me just say hi to a few people. So hi to Anne, Henry, um, Ray Gould, Melanie. Hi, Beth has joined us, Melinda's here. Evelyn, oh my gosh, Cindy, Anise. There's tons of you uh, joining in this evening. I know that this is a very interesting topic for you. So let's continue with the discussion. And of course, please feel free to comment at any time. Um, give me one quick second here. I'm happy to have you guys comment. So um, one quick second here. Right. So Giselle, um, let me just read the message. Hold on. I'm going to pull it up on my phone. I wanted to do a little screen share, but that's taking a little bit of some time to do. Uh, computers can be so slow sometimes. So it says, good morning, Sandra. This message was received February the 6th at 8.41 a.m. via our Instagram page. Good morning, Sandra. I don't know how else to contact you. Anyway, my son, so-and-so, um, got stabbed by his crazy ex-girlfriend, Giselle Johnson of West Bay. He is now in critical care unit at the hospital with a collapsed lung which she punctured with one of the two stabs that she gave him. Please post. She is not a very good person. She's been harassing him for some time now, even tried to run him over with her car um, last Friday night by the office lounge. She want people to believe that she's all innocent, but she has mental issues. Thanks. Please post a CMR. If you need photos, I can provide them. And then the person signed their name. Now, obviously this person has one side of the story and I wanna make it extremely clear that at no point, hi Kayla, thank you for tuning in, we appreciate it. I wanna make it very, very clear that at no point in time have we taken a side in any of these stories, right? That's not our business, to be honest. So I want people to understand kind of how this works. Someone contacts us, they say, listen, someone has been arrested, someone has tried to rob my house, this is what's transpired, I want you to put the story out there. We put the story up. What's the name of the website? What's the name of the Facebook page? Cayman Marl Road. I don't get how many times we've had to explain what the Marl Road is. You guys understand the concept of what the Marl Road is, right? The Marl Road essentially means that if it's out there in any form at all, People are talking about it. It's topical. It's being discussed in the community. That's what the Mall Road is all about. And so Cayman Mall Road seeks to address a lot of issues that ordinarily would never make the news. Because you know what? The establishment that runs the various news agencies could care less about 60% of what's happening in this community. They only want to address the issues that GIS sends a press release on, the police might send out a press release in a very um, nice coveted fashion where they're not gonna give you much of the details, just that this person got arrested, you have no idea what's going on, you don't know if a pedophile is loose in your community, none of those things. But everybody's talking about it, we hear it, our ears are down to the ground. If you have WhatsApp, people are discussing these topics and we all know that this is true. So Ma Road isn't about pretending. We're not trying to cushion anything. We're the real deal. If people are talking about it, if it's topical, if it's on the streets, we're gonna put it out there. Does Ma Road get involved in gossipy things? Of course we do, because that's on the Ma Road. So there are times when things come to us and yes, it's a little bit gossipy. Hi, Shirley, thanks for tuning in. Um, and of course we address it because gossip is part of the mall road and it's part of who we are 
as a community. Now, when this mother contacted us, she obviously presented one side of the story. Giselle and I, I happen to be acquaintances, Facebook acquaintances. And so I want to make it very, very clear because now this um, sort of idea is out there that somehow I was taking a side on this topic when I arrested that Giselle had been arrested. Um, yeah, so I'm going to get to some of the comments in just a little bit. Thanks very much, guys, for posting them. I do see them coming in. Right now, we have 141 people in on this live stream. A lot of you are commenting, so just give me um, a, a minute to get some of your comments up, right? I'm just trying to give you the backdrop on what happened. So when, Gis when Giselle got arrested, like I said, Giselle and I are actually Facebook friends. In the past, and I had to go back into my emails, and here's the irony of it. I don't want to share this screenshot because it was a very confidential matter, and I don't want to out Giselle. This isn't an attack on Giselle in any way, shape, or form. And Giselle and I have spoken. We spoke yesterday, and I hope that she understands where this broadcast is coming from. We're just trying to put our position out there because after she went to Cayman News Service, a lot of people felt like, you know what, we needed to respond to this whole situation. So that's what this is all about. Johan wants to know what's it all about. So we are responding to this whole concept of naming and shaming and the fact that Cayman News Service has put up a post saying that Giselle felt like she has been named and shamed. And so as a result, I'm addressing her specific situation as well as the broader topics surrounding it. So I'm giving a little bit of a backdrop of information. Um, so back in February the 24th of 2017, that was almost two years ago to the date. Giselle contacted me previous to that, and this was at 8.53 in the morning. Actually, let me go back a little bit here. I actually sent this email initially at, yes, 8.53 a.m. on February the 24th of 2016. She was in another incident where she had been arrested by the police for assaulting another man. And she came to me with her version of the story and what had transpired. And she felt like the police were not listening to her. They were not assisting her and they were not taking her allegations seriously as to why she assaulted this individual. Now, we're going to talk about this pattern of behavior with Giselle in just a little bit, as well as with um, another young lady who's the second runner up for Cayman, because there's a lot of people in this community who engage in certain patterns of behavior over and over and over again, and we excuse it, right? So right now, Giselle's going through a situation. She's claiming she was in an abusive relationship. This guy was stalking her. This guy did this. This guy did that. But what I know for a fact is this isn't the first time that Giselle has been in a situation where she has said someone has done something to her. And I'm not discounting because I don't know this boyfriend or ex-boyfriend or whatever his situation is. I don't know him from the man in the moon. So I'm not taking a side. I am not um, saying that he's in the right or she's in the wrong. What I do know for a fact is Giselle has been arrested before for assaulting a man on at least one occasion, possibly more. And it's because she, had she has found herself in a situation where men do certain things to her and she feels like she needs to respond, okay? So I contacted Derek Burns, who was the detect who was um, the commissioner of police at the time. He still is. Anthony Ennis, Peter Lansdowne, who's a supervisor. Faye, who worked for the RCIPS. And another young lady, I don't know what her role is at the RCPS, but she also, she, ironically, her last name is Johnson as well. She worked there. So I copied these in individuals. I said, listen, this is what has transpired. This is the version of the story that I have from this young lady. And I think as someone at a more senior level needs to look at this and to be very, very cautious how they proceed with this investigation, because she may have been wrongly arrested. So I want you to now keep that in mind and let's fast forward a little bit to where we are today. So here we are almost two years later, Giselle has assaulted someone, uh, allegedly stabbed him twice. She claims in her Cayman New Service story that he may have stabbed himself. I don't know how that works. And 
she decides to go to Cayman News Service and puts forward a story that makes it look as though Cayman Mall Road is naming it, shaming her, it's unfair, we're making her look bad and all this sort of stuff. My first question for Giselle is, Giselle, when we put up the story, why didn't you come to me in the first instance like you have in the past? I've just given you that example of two years ago where you came to me and you actually had something to say. You could speak to me. You know, we had that type of dialogue, that type of conversation that in my mind, the door was already open. It was more open than it was two years ago. So I'm a bit perplexed as to why, you know, you think or you're saying that we didn't listen to you and we didn't, you know, cover your side of the story. It's because we never heard from you. But allow me to tell you who we heard from. Okay, so Giselle did the following. She had someone contact us on her behalf when this story went up. Now, this is where you have to be very, very careful when you're not honest and you're not telling the truth. Because things have a way of coming to light and coming back and biting you a little bit. So just give me one quick second here. I want to see if I can share my screen. Um, so I'm going to share this. Okay, right. So screen one. That's this one here. Can we see that? Okay, just give me a second here, guys. Um, I may have to pull it up on screen two, actually, and just move this over so that I can still see all the controls. So just give me one second. So Giselle actually had someone contact us, contact me directly, and that person sent me a voice note. So I'm going to show you what this is, right? So I've typed out the voice note because I do not wish to get this individual. This person does not even live in the Cayman Islands presently. And essentially, they don't, they honestly don't want to get mixed up in this. So let me just see if I'm able to um, to see that. So I've typed out part of what they said because some of it was a little bit more confidential and a lot um, more than what I would want to share. So they said, so Giselle knows the story is out there, but she's upset and disappointed that her picture's up on Mall Road and named when she's not been charged with anything. She said there's a lot more to the story coming. It's just that the witnesses were in favor of him that night, basically. She wanted to know if you could at least retract her image out there since she's not been charged with anything because she's literally about to sign a contract for a new job. All right. So in my mind, I said, let me, let me try to comprehend what this means, right? Because now here is a young lady who's saying she's the victim here. She's been victimized. And what is happening to her is very unfair and Cayman Mall Road would not give her the time of day. So not only did Giselle not contact us, but the message that she conveyed that got through to us wasn't that she was a victim. So let, let me make sure you understand this, right? It wasn't that she was a victim. It was the fact that she was concerned that she had been named, had not yet been charged, because she is about to sign a contract for a new job. Now, hold on. Seriously. I'm a woman. Most of you tuned into this are women. Some of you are men. Some of us have been in abusive relationships. They're very traumatizing. If you had just been arrested where you were the true victim, so now you're in your mind being re-victimized again, the door is already open and you cannot come and talk to me. What's the first thing you do? You reach out to someone else who's actually closer to me. And I think that's why she did it to say, oh, please take my picture down because I'm about to sign a contract, not because I'm a victim here and I actually didn't do anything wrong. Uh-uh, girl, please. That doesn't make any sense. I'm not saying that you were not victimized by this man. And the two of you obviously had a very tumultuous relationship from the sounds of it. That's the bottom line. 
But the fact that you came and only presented that, this, this, this first message that I received, because like I said, I'm open to making sure to put it out there, both sides of the story. Give me your side of the story. I didn't get that. So when Giselle then goes to came on new service and said, well, you know, came on mall road, never took my side of the story. All we heard was please take down my picture and my name because I haven't been charged and I'm going to be signing the contract. That was the message that was conveyed. Now, if that person got the message wrong, I don't know, but at the end of the day, why wasn't the message really and truly that I'm a victim here there's more to this story in terms of me being victimized by him and it was self-defense. So let's talk about the broader topics, right? Of naming and shaming. And what I will say is we received tons of messages about this situation, which include messages from other people who said that they had been victimized by Giselle and they had been subjected to bottle fits, it was how one were, one um, individual described it, trying to cut somebody's throat a second time. And all of these things were subjected to someone being arrested, namely Giselle. And this person said, of course, they want to remain anonymous because there's a reputation that she will physically attack you, her, and it says a gang of friends. You know, this was information, we didn't put this information out there because again, it was not our place to try to make Giselle look bad. The person said the judicial system has failed because they failed to build a case as the justice system in Cayman fails so many times. So I hope that this young man finds justice because this isn't the first time. There are at least two other incidents that have gone to court. All right, let's read through some of your comments. And then I want to talk about this concept of naming and shaming and what came on Marlwood really, really does. So Kathy claims that she wants us to get to the point. Um, Kathy, just FYI, in order to get to the point, sometimes you have to provide additional information. You're bored, please log out. Kathy, goodbye. We do not need you. This, this format isn't for everyone, and I have no issues. We have 176 people tuned in right now. We can have 175, it's cool, it's no problem, goodbye. So Vanessa says, if you're not trying to um, let her look bad, what are you doing right now? What I'm doing right now, Vanessa, is I'm attempting to tell the backdrop of the story so that people have a fuller picture of what transpired. That's what it is. Someone said people don't like to share their story. That's Vanessa again. Okay, Vanessa, we know what side of the fence you're on. It's not necessarily an unbiased side, but you're entitled to your opinion, not a problem. Felicia, good evening. She's laughing and saying, I see you there, Rico or at Ebanks. Rico's tuned in. Thank you, Rico. Thank you very, very much. Um, <laughs> Bronte says, hurry up and find Wi-Fi. Um, Blair says he's not worried about domestics. Well, there's a bigger issue here, Blair, that we're going to be discussing. Oh, Vanessa has a lot of comments. Um, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this name right. I think the name is Uhan Gordon. Sorry if I don't have it right, but he's got his popcorn ready. Maria, good comment here. Maria says, if the door was already open and you were able to have that type of dialogue with her, why not reach out to her when you heard about it before posting it, not taking any sides here? I don't know the girl. I'm just going off of what you said. Well, here's the bottom line. I didn't reach out to anyone. I didn't reach out to the other party. The other party reached out to me. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> so Giselle reached out to me directly, but did not bother to say what she could then say to Cayman News Service about a week and odd later, which is that she was the victim. He's been harassing her. He's been doing this. He's been doing that. So she reached out to me, not immediately, but she did reach out and she didn't provide that information. Um, Amanda says, hey, not even came on 27. Uh, get so many viewers when they're live and she's having a good chuckle off of that. Thanks, Amanda, for the support. 
Stephanie, good evening, CML. CMR, Stephanie, and audience. Um, Sora says, hi, Sandra, 100% support here. We appreciate it. Yuhan is going on and on. He doesn't care. Yuhan, log out. Daisy, she's watching. Thank you very much. Let's see if we have any other interesting comments. Um, Jamelia says, oh my God, I think this is the most viewed to date. And you know what, Jamelia, you're absolutely right. We've not had, we're pushing 200 people. We've never, even with the fiasco with Skylar, we didn't have that many people tuned in. Uh, Monday is going to be another hot topic where we do a full expose on um, Matthew Leslie. So I hope you guys tune in for that. Tori says, big facts, iconic facts. Um, and then Shirley says, it's a version of if you see something, say something. And that's what Kim and Ma wrote is about. So I think that's when she made that comment. So apologies if I don't get to all of your comments. Kayla said, hello. Thank you again, Kayla, for joining us. All right, so let me move on a little bit, fast forward, so that we can have this discussion about why is it that Cayman Ma Road names people? The first question I wanna ask you guys, and I want you guys to really give me your honest feedback on this, is naming actually shaming? And this is a matter of perception, right? Is naming shaming? We say that someone has been arrested. Where's the shame in that? The Cayman Islands government, remember when they named and shamed people at one time? Pension, they used to have up a list, an entire website, where they would say these individuals, these employers have not or not current with their, their pension payment plans. You guys remember that? That was a couple years ago. I don't know if that's still being held current or what the position is. But the idea in that situation was to highlight and inform the public that those persons were not paying pension. Maybe it was a situation where, you know what, if I'm thinking of working with ABC company and I see them on, the, on this list for not paying pensions on time or being in arrears, maybe I'll double think that situation and not decide to go and work for that company. The reason that Cayman Mall Road has taken this approach of naming individuals is because we are of the opinion actually that when you name everyone, that is arrested, you remove the stigma. So what's the current position? You know what the current position is? When the police feel like it, they will name someone. So there are times when they name someone if they need your help finding them. So let's think about, um, there was a Barnes fella some years ago, right? He was a multiple offender, rapist, and he was out on the loose and came in RCIPS said, guess what? This guy is on the loose. Here's his picture. Here's his name. Help us find them. A couple months ago, they were looking for another guy, Mr. Hurlston. Here's his photo. We, he's a wanted man. Help us find him. So when the RCIPS needs your help, they can name, they can provide photos, and they can ask you for, for your assistance. All right. Maybe there's a slight argument there. What about the other newspapers and the other media houses out there? When do they name? Oh, hold on. They utilize their discretion. Oh, listen to this. You guys are okay with this part though. Whenever they believe that it is in the public interest to do so. And that's what we call a subjective test. So it depends on who it is. They will name. Now, for God's sake, tell me how is that any better of a position than naming every single person? So you're going to leave it up to me to say, hmm, this isn't the public interest. This person is politically connected, like when McKeever Bush got arrested. So we're going to name him. Remember, he got arrested in Miami. We're going to name him. He got arrested in Cayman. We're going to name him. When Sandra gets arrested, that's also in the public interest because she's a public figure. So we're going to put it out there. We're going to name these people. When Austin Harris got arrested, yep, that's in the public interest. So what's the litmus test? Is it just politicians? Remember when Arden's son, Jamil McLean, got arrested? That was put out there. Hmm. So now it's not just politicians, but maybe if they're connected to politicians. What makes, it, what makes that subjective test work? Is it your hair is purple, so today is a good day to name you? Because that's in the public interest? I don't get it. So the standard that we have put in place 
is anyone who is arrested that we can obtain their name and get their information, we're gonna put it out there. And eventually it's be gonna become the norm like it is in many other jurisdictions around the world. So when someone gets arrest arrested, you're not gonna be like, oh my God, this person's arrested. They definitely did it. Oh, whoa. It's gonna be like, okay, this person has been arrested, but there is actually more to this. You get arrested on suspicion of something. It doesn't mean you're gonna get charged and it certainly doesn't mean that you're guilty. So we are looking to normalize the process. Let's read a few of your comments. Okay, Amanda. Amanda says people want to be named and recognized for the good. It needs to be done for the bad. All right, thank you for sharing your opinion. Um, Debbie says, yep, she's in agreement. Amanda's in agreement, she says yes as well. Uh, naming is letting the public know what's happening. That's Amanda again. So Amanda is very much engaged in this conversation. Thank you very much. Bronte says, laughing out loud. It isn't, but it is for the people who personally know the person named that. That's what it is. Mary has joined the conversation. Hi, Mary. Mary's from West Bay. So she's hailing from the West. It's not the first live show laughing out loud. So I think she's responding to somebody else. Spellman is enjoying the show this evening, says, nice job. Chance, Chance is all the way in the brack. Chance, thank you so much for tuning in. Chance says, if you don't want to be named, stay out of the public's eye. Keep naming and shaming them, CMR. Uh, Chandra, sorry, I can't get that last name there. Naming is definitely not shaming. And that's the point <clears throat> that I want to actually make, that naming does not equate to your guilt and it doesn't equate to anything else. And in fact, we encourage you, if you've been arrested, just like remember there was the mother and daughter team that was arrested recently by the fin financial crimes unit. You know what they did? As soon as they got out, they called Cayman Mall Road because of course we're gonna get it. We're gonna know financial crime comes and picks you up at work. And they said, listen, they didn't go into tremendous details, but they were of the opinion that there was some bias activity going on with the police. We don't know if there is or not, but guess what? It's on the mall road, we're gonna put it out there. You guys are adults, you have discretion. You can decide when you read something, how does this sound, right? If, it's, if someone is just arrested and the allegation is that she stabbed him twice, he's got two stabbed wounds, she's now claiming they're self-inflicted she will go to court, put that argument forward, and someone will decide whether or not that sounds like a good argument or not, because that's how the legal system works. Debbie says, name them all. Leslie, she's overseas as well. Go to US of A. The report was unbiased, Sandy stated facts. Folks want to be hurt. Don't, don't do dumb shit. Then your face won't be all over CMR page. Debbie says, love you always, girl, and what you do. Uh, Stephanie, she looks like she's having a glass of wine. She says, laughing out loud must be the wine. She's referring to her uh, misspelling the name. Um, Jasmine says, this is where it's at. <laughs> Jasmine, I just can't. And Mary, thank you very much. Mary says to take your time. Don't let anyone rush you. I'm, um, which I'm sure you won't, it's easy to just exit. And that's the God's honest truth. If you don't like it, you know you know the exit button. There's a lot more interesting things going on in Facebook. Maybe you can go to YouTube or listen to Donald Trump or something and, and watch something else. I don't know. Uh, Chance says, bye girl. Sandy, you kill me. Um, Daisy says that she needs to hear some more. And then Kyle is having a good laugh with Ricky Tatum. So some of you seem to be having a little bit of inside uh, joke there between yourselves. <sighs> Olivia, your comment has me laughing. <laughs> she says, goodbye, we don't need you, I am dying. <laughs> well, the honest truth is most of you will know that I'm just a tell it like it is kind of person. That doesn't mean that you have to agree with me. It doesn't mean that you have to like what I say. But if I've got an opinion, like everybody else in this country, we all have an opinion, just like we all have a rear end and we're entitled to it. It's a 21st century folks, get with it. 
It's called freedom of speech. You can say anything you want. People don't have to listen to you. They don't have to like what you say, but you have a right to say it. And regardless of what you, you know, think, express yourself. Sora says, shout out to the, shout out from the BRAC. Oh, you're in the BRAC as well. I'm sorry. I did not know that. So lots of love to our, our BRACers. And who knows, we might even have one or two listening from uh, Little Cayman as well. And then she also said that they need to check in the Webster Dictionary what naming means and what shaming means. All right. So listen, this is what, there's, this is what I want to explain to you guys. I think that this is really important. A lot of people in the Cayman Islands do not understand the process. You know, we watch a lot of American TV. So we see in the States, um, what are some of these shows? Um, oh, gosh. what, what are, um, CSI. You know, they blare in, guns drawn, they arrest somebody, take them away. They have a quickie trial and the person's incarcerated, gone to jail, boom, boom. That's not how the process works in the real world. And there is a difference between what happens in the UK versus what happens under the English legal system, which the Cayman Islands falls under. So I think this is a little bit of information that um, definitely needs to be put out there. I see some of you commenting and I'll definitely address some of those questions here shortly. When you get arrested in the Cayman Islands, you notice that it always says the person has been arrested on suspicion of murder, manslaughter, theft, um, GBH, assault, whatever. It says specifically on suspicion of something because that's all it is. So they're not the police and the, the DPP's office are not yet in a position to say, okay, we actually feel like we have enough to take this to court. So they just have a little bit of an inkling that something here might be illegal and they're gonna arrest you on suspicion of it. The idea then is for them to go away and do a proper investigation, which we know doesn't always happen. Let's call the police out when we need to. They do a proper investigation. They send the file to the legal department. So it's the police officer's jobs. They have a lead officer, he will investigate. They'll talk to witnesses, they'll get witness statements. They put it all together. So the police collect the evidence, fingerprints, um, a weapon, whatever the situation may be. They put it all together, send it off to the DPP's office as a file. The DPP's office, because they're the ones who are legally trained. Because remember, most of our police officers don't have a clue when it actually comes to the law. And this is why sometimes the shit hits the fan, right? They don't understand the law. A lot of them may not have even read a piece of legislation under which they are arresting you. So the legal department, that's right. Someone says legal has the say if you get arrested. This is absolutely correct. The legal department will look at the file, look at the statements, look at what has been sent to them. It is their job from a legal perspective to say to the police, we believe this person should be charged. So the police rely upon the expertise of the DPP stands for Director of Public Prosecution's Office. That's the crown, right? They rely on their knowledge of the law, of what's required. So for example, if someone accuses you of theft, there are actually certain requirements for that to be proven. For example, I don't wanna get too technical here in the law because I'm not giving you guys a lesson um, you know, out of, out of a law book, but there's what's called a mental element called the mens rea. And then there's the physical part of it, like the act itself, the actus reus. Okay. So there, and there are defenses and there are lots of things that can complicate our lives and get thrown in there. Right. But the basis is if they're charging you, theft is a pretty easy one. The definition of theft is the intent to permanently deprive someone of something that you have no legal excuse or no legal right to. So if you took something from someone, they have to prove that you intended, so there's that mental element, that you intended to do what? Permanently deprive them. Listen, if you took it and you were gonna give it back, so you were borrowing it, that's actually not theft. So they can't charge you with theft. They can look about charging with something else. If you had a lawful excuse, so you took it under some, you know, understanding that under another law that you actually could do that, that would be an example of some sort of a lawful excuse. 
that also wouldn't be theft. So there are lots of things, and these are the things that um, the actual legal department, the DPP's office, will have their attorneys review. There are times when they will send a file back to the police and say, listen, you don't have enough here. You either need to get more, clarify these witness statements, do this sort of investigation, X, Y, Z, and then send us back the file and we'll tell you when you can proceed to be charged. The time period varies and how long it takes. Sometimes they move very quickly, whatever. When you have now been charged, charging someone does not mean obviously they're guilty. Hello. I know from personal experience, I have been charged. I kind of lost count, but I think it's four or five times for a variety of different things, everything from dog theft to all sorts of other stuff. And the truth of the matter is none of those allegations had any merit. You know why? Again, when you charge someone with theft, you have to prove that they were intended to permanently deprive someone without lawful excuse. Actually under the animal law, I reported the dog missing. I tried to look for the dog, blah, blah, blah. So it was a ridiculous case. The judge threw it out. All of my cases have been thrown out. They went to court, but they got thrown out where I did not even have to put on a defense because the judge said, this is ridiculous. So Giselle will have her day in court. Tiffany Conley will have her day in court. Every single person that has been arrested, if they are then charged, they will have their day in court. From my own personal experiences, and I say this with caution. It has been my experience that the judicial system, once you get to court, especially if, <coughs> sorry, you have a judge who's experienced and who looks at facts and who looks at the law, they tend to make the right decision, in my opinion. And that's just my opinion. I had one jury trial but it didn't even get to the jury because like I said, the judge threw it out. He instructed the jury to throw this case out and that was the end of it. So I've never really gotten that far where I've had to put up a defense. So I'm just trying to um, make sure I clarify that, right? <clears throat> All right, so let's, um, let's go to some of your comments. Um, Kayla says, Vanessa sounds like an eyewitness. To me, Sandra should get an interview with her. Listen. <laughs> Anybody that wants to come on one of our live stream chats, you are more than welcome and you're free to do so. This new format that we have, listen, honey, all you need is a webcam and a computer of your own at home and we can hook up the interview. And I have no problems interviewing anyone who wants to put their position out there. Um, Sora says, my girl, how did it happen? How did it happen is what I'm asking. Duh, I want an explanation how it took place step by step. So Sora is wanting a bit more information. I think people here are referring to um, the fact that this guy supposedly self-inflicted his own stab wounds. Um, <clears throat> uh, well, Vanessa says he did. So I guess Vanessa was there. She said, simple, take the friggin' knife and cut himself. Okay. Um, Bronte says, did he drop on the knife? Uh, Stephanie says, in your lung, it's kind of, I mean, listen, we're, we're not going to litigate this case in the public. We'll see when it goes to court. We can definitely have that discussion once the evidence comes out. But I will say, if you stab yourself twice, um, both in the chest here and the lungs, you're, you're pretty good to get the second stab room in. So that's, that would be pretty amazing, but, you know, we'll see. Um, but, you know, this is, this is all a matter of opinion. She will get her day in court. A jury will decide. A judge will decide based on the evidence. And thank God now for things like not just eyewitnesses, because let me be honest here. Eyewitnesses can see a lot of things that didn't happen like from a certain angle and that sort of thing. But DNA evidence. So I guess his, his fingerprints are on the, on the knife. Her fingerprints would definitely not be on the knife if he self-inflicted those wounds. There's only a certain way that you can stab yourself. All of those things will come out forensically. So Chant said, are you talking about what side, sh what, sorry, are you talking about when, <clears throat> I'm a little confused here. Are you talking about when side she tried to run him over with her car and he landed on the back windshield and broke it and um, he then gave her dollars towards fixing it. So listen, whatever the situation is here with Giselle and this guy, I think it's fair to say, if you are objective and you don't know either party and you're not trying to pick sides here, 
this sounds like a very tumultuous relationship. I mean, it really, really does. And that's very, very sad because we are going to have discussions, <coughs> sorry, about abuse in this community. And it runs in both directions. Um, men abuse women in probably 90% of the cases, but there are women out there who are just as crazy and they are just as violent and they will kill a man when they're ready. So they abuse people as well. And this is a topic that we need to address in this community because it doesn't make us any better um, when we are involved in these types of physical altercations. So his mom has actually tuned in, Diane. She says he's doing good, thanks be to God. Um, thanks for the feedback. I mean, listen to me. Despite where you fall on this discussion, we all need to be thankful that this young man is alive because Giselle would be facing some very serious charges. It's, it's bad enough, but she would be facing additional serious charges if he died. And this is where I have, I have spoken to Giselle, like I said, and I said, listen, in the moment we can, we all have tempers and maybe certain things set off different people or whatever. Um, but you have to be careful because these decisions can have some serious life altering implications. Vanessa wants to know, she had a question, boy, Vanessa, <laughs> you are very invested in this. I got a question. Are you going to put out the article that the boy destroyed her car and there was witnesses and that the police were called? Are you going to address that he got arrested for his case too? Vanessa, I'm still waiting for that information. There's a video out there. We all want to see the video, right folks? Who else wants to see the video? Seriously, do we not all want to see this video? I mean, I want to see it. We can put it out there. I don't have any issue putting it out there. Um, Bronte says, question, would you have changed the story if she did reach out? Absolutely, yes. And we have before. We have had situations before where we posted a story, somebody comes forward and says, listen, you need to amend this story. This is what it is. These are additional facts, whatever the situation is. And we have amended it without issue, no problem whatsoever. I invited Giselle to come on this evening. Giselle, come and sit, have your say. Tell us what really transpired, what's going on, et cetera. She declined. She was, I guess, happy with what story came out and came on news service. Johan says, what defines public interest for the media folks? Hmm. Well, let's, let's talk about this for a second. Because what I do know is I know what doesn't define public interest. <clears throat> so we had a situation where a man molested six Caymanian children, all underage, some extremely young, and that wasn't in the public interest. Ironically, they stuck that story in the same story that they did in Giselle, which I thought was, was such an interesting thing. Is that not in the public interest? Oh no, but he has the court's protection, you see. The court would rather not name him and say, oh, this is gonna be sub judice. Here's what's amazing. When the media, the police get certain information about child molestation in particular, because you guys know this is one that really grinds me to no end and that I will continue to defend. And that's why there's certain people in this community I have no respect for. And we'll be talking about one of them on Monday who time and time again has gone after young girls underage girls, 13 years, 13 year old children, right? That's not in the public interest, right? That's what people want you to believe. I'm calling straight up BS on that. That is in the public interest. Sorry, give me one second here. I got a little bit of feedback. <clears throat> Sorry folks, I just had some feedback coming in. 
on where I was monitoring um, that. So to me, that's 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 very interesting that a lot of those cases, a lot of those child predators or child molesters, none of that apparently is in the public interest. Instead of saying, why don't you use the same subjective power? <clears throat> why don't you use the same subjective power to name the person and get more creative about the details that you put out there so that you do not identify the victim. Because we have no interest in ever naming child victims. Never, ever, ever. But there's a way to do it. You can say this person did X, Y, Z. And you can still not provide all the salacious details that lead you to identify who the victims were. It's quite easy to do, actually. <clears throat> and it's been done before. But no, it's a matter of subjectivity. What's in the public interest? So it's, it's in the public interest to say nothing about child molestation, to say nothing about when someone is arrested, to not identify that person as a pedophile, so that when he goes to Northward and serves a minimum sentence, which we know that's going to be the truth, and he gets back out, he's able to move into your neighborhood Kayla, he's going to move into your neighborhood next door. And because he was never named publicly, you have no clue who he think who he is. Do you think that's actually fair? Well, Kayla says, should hang men like him by their balls out in public, disgusting MFS. And I absolutely agree. Prudis is in agreement. Deb says the only remedy for child molesters is death. They can't be fixed. I agree. And a lot of professionals agree too. <laughs> Therapy doesn't really work for a lot of these guys. <clears throat> Leslie says, obviously if Sandy had that information, she would have shared it. She has made sure to share all 10 sides of a story in the past. And that is very, very true. Um, Diane says that men get abused, but they're ashamed to go to the police. That's why they're not reports. Sora says that this is like days of our lives. Leroy, thanks for tuning in, Leroy. Good to see you. He said this sounds like a lot of drama in both of their lives. And I absolutely agree with you. And there are times when we, again, as adults and young people, if you're listening to this conversation, there are toxic people in this world and there are toxic relationships. And you don't mesh with everyone out there. So someone could be a really nice person otherwise, but your personality and their personality is like oil and water. And that's when you need to avoid those types of relationships. If you're in a relationship and you find yourself wanting to beat someone up or stab them or hit them on the head with a coconut or whatever, you need to just walk away from the situation. That relationship is not for you. Seriously. All right, let's see some more of your comments. Um, Debbie says that if a child turns you on sexually, you don't belong on this earth. Here, here, Debbie, agree with you. Johan, <laughs> you need to keep up. This show isn't surviving R. Kelly, no. That's gonna be Monday's episode, Surviving Matthew Leslie. So please check the Facebook page. We do announce when our live stream events are coming up. Um, Vanessa, <laughs> Vanessa, let me, let me invite you on the program. I want to give you a show because I think you have enough to fill an entire show. We can have a save Giselle Johnson episode and you can come on and you can be the voice of reason for Vanessa, for, for Giselle, sorry. So Vanessa says, I've known Giselle for over 20 years and we've been friends for 16 years. What gang? In school, everyone walked with a group. We weren't saints, no one is, but we are adults. What gang is she in? She's working, she's recently opened an online store. What gang now? Honey, we're just reading the comments. <laughs> like seriously, people again are entitled to their opinion. You've stated yours. You say there's no gang. She doesn't have, I think the term is being used very loosely, to be honest. Maybe you're taking it a bit literally, but a gang of friends that she, the people that she hangs out with. But you've just admitted your bias because you've known her for 20 years. That doesn't mean you're right. And it doesn't mean that you're wrong. 
Jasmine says, no man, my girl, yo. Jasmine, I'm not sure exactly what you're referring to there, but we see your comment. And Debbie's having a good laugh. So let us make sure that we understand the criminal process, first and foremost, that we understand that Cayman Mall Road is trying to fill a void in this community. And given the fact that almost 11,000 of you have liked this page and engage on some level, I think you appreciate most of what we do. You might not like everything. And like I said, hey, that's, that's life. You're not going to like everything that anybody does. But at the end of the day, we try to address the real issues that are actually out there on the mall road. Jasmine says, no man, my girl, you should, you sound like you need your own new service. I don't, I'm not sure who, who she's referring to. Jasmine, if you can clarify who that comment is actually for. Um, some of you I know are replying. And of course, I'm seeing there's over 178 comments on this live stream. So when I read a comment, I may not always know um, who you're like referring to. So maybe if you just do at and tag the person that you're actually responding to, because I think some of you, it's a bit of a back and forth. Leona had a good laugh. She said, um, surviving Matthew Leslie. That's coming on Monday. And trust me, get your whatever liquor of choice you may have, whether it's K-Brew, because we're going to talk about that line, whether it's a Heineken, whether it is a cup of tea, a hot cup of tea, a cold cup of tea, I don't really care. A glass of Chardonnay, some red wine, whatever. Get ready for Monday's episode because we're going to tell it like it is. We're going to tell it straight and give you all of the evidence you have never had the opportunity to see. Danica says, what is going on, girl? You're late. You are an hour late. But good news is with a live stream event, you can always go back and watch it. So we can't catch you up right now, but you can go back and watch it. Uh, Jasmine says that there's an entire movement in the pedophile community where they're trying to normalize pedophilia as if it's normal sexuality. It is not. And the law, like you mentioned, does not punish them adequately. So we, the public, absolutely need to call them out, name them, put their faces up on flyers in the community. And if they move into your area, out of them all, out them all. Absolutely, Jasmine. Thank you so much for that comment. And um, Sora says, uh, yes, boy, you late, love. I think she was talking to Denisha. So sorry, Denisha, you are a little bit late. Um, and Jasmine was actually referring to Vanessa earlier. Okay. So Vanessa says she's not biased. I know of her reporting him, blah, 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 blah. Okay, Vanessa, we've given you enough airtime for the evening. Like I said, if you want your own show, we can arrange it. Jasmine says, as for the G Giselle situation, I don't have an opinion. Sounds like her name and her rest are already public knowledge when CMR posted it. I just here for the tea. That looks like hot tea. Fitzroy says, hello, Sandra, because everyone will have their day in court, it's important for the media to tread the very fine line on reporting. In relation to this case, I don't think it's in the public's interest for this to be discussed. Oftentimes we forget that we that what we say in public influences others and such it could, it could said that this discussion could possibly compromise the case once it's listed for court. Let me say something about that, Fitzroy. A couple of years ago, there was a movement for there to be a judge alone case. So all criminal matters would go to judges alone. There would be no more juries and we would do away with the jury system. Some people feel very, very strongly that the jury system is entrenched in any democracy. And the, the right to have a jury of your peers is an important um, component of our democratic system when it comes to due process in the courts. Other people fear, other people, sorry, have argued that jurors tend to be extremely biased. And trust me, we've seen cases where people get off and you go, how the heck did that, how did that jury come to the conclusion that that person was guilty or not guilty or whatever? So we see the bias all the time. Okay, so what you're saying is very, very interesting indeed. And I think you make a valid point. And then does that then mean the argument that we should have judge alone trials is a valid argument? 
Should we do away with jurors completely because Cayman is too small and everybody has a bias one way or the other? But you know, the bottom line is when you serve as a juror, you're supposed to be able to look at the evidence put before you and come to decision. That's why the appeal process is so important because if someone comes to the wrong decision, there's often a means by which you can appeal that. Now, we don't know who's gonna be ch chosen as a juror. Those people may never even read Cayman Mall Road. They may never even look at it. Most judges I'm pretty sure have no clue what Cayman Mall Road is. They're not invested like that in this community. So she has a choice as any accused person does, whether she wants a jury trial or she wishes to have a judge alone trial. And every accused has that choice. So if she really believes that there's something in the public domain that, you know, at the end of the day, she's not going to get a fair trial. But let's, let's keep in mind, there are lots of mechanisms before you even get to the trial. For example, when you get there and they say, um, we're going to bring up Sandra as a jury, and Giselle goes, oh, no, 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 no. I don't want Sandra. She has a choice to say, get rid of Sandra for whatever reason. So you get to pick to a certain extent your jurors. You get to pick the jury. Defense and prosecution has the ability to dismiss people selected for jury. Uh, Debbie said, amen, sister and Matthew. <laughs> we won't take, we, that'll be Monday, trust me. We will be discussing that one on Monday. So Sora says, so love, why didn't she tell CMR? I don't get it. Again, we got a message, but um, we didn't get the message that she now has conveyed somewhere else. So Peter said, to be honest, not really trying to get in the mix, <laughs> but you know, you know, when somebody says, I ain't trying to do this, but here we go. You are getting in the mix. As a Caymanian, Cayman Ma Road sure as know how to tear her own down SMFH. It's just sad, Sandra, trust me. And more, and most of the time, your news is not always correct. Let me say this to you, Peters. I don't know who you are. But when you say something like most of the time, your news is not always correct. I take an issue with that. You can have your opinion that I'm trying to tear people down. That's ridiculous. But when you say most of the time, your news is not always correct, that actually is an incorrect statement. 97% of what we report, and you can go back and check all you want, is 100% spot on and then some. Because the truth of the matter is, we give you more than what the police are going to give you. We give you more than what came on new service is going to give you. We give you more than what the compass is going to give you because we give you the backstory. So yes, my friend, 97% of what we put out there is 100% on. All right, so a couple more comments coming in. Oh, Vanessa, seriously, girl, I, okay. I've read at least 10 of your comments tonight. I think we're done giving you an audience. So Chance responds to Peters, wait, um, that's what you're getting out of what Sandy Hill's saying, yes, okay. And she says, yes, it's like you rejoice on your own Cayman downfall. Girl, please, you don't know me. And that there's nothing actually that could be farther from the truth. And when I had a conversation with Giselle yesterday, I actually, I'm very fond of Giselle. I think she has, um, she's a beautiful young lady and I think she has a lot of potential. She may have had a hard start in life, but a lot of us have. So I don't want people to get this twisted that I'm trying to rejoice in anyone's downfall. That's not what this is about. I'm reporting what's on the mall road. If the bad is on the mall road, I report it. If the good is on the mall road, I report it. Some of the most popular posts on Cayman Mall Road have been the good positive ones. Like the two female pilots at Cayman Airways. When we posted that, that went viral. We had like over 500 likes. No other post has gotten that many. So when you come at me about, oh, I rejoice about people's downfalls, no. But I'm reporting it. Reporting it, naming people, doesn't mean that I take any rejoicing, any happiness, none of that. That's not what this is about. Now, what I do want to make very, very clear, and this is just my personal opinion, how I feel about something, 
is that there are a lot of people in this community who do things time and time and time and time again, get away with it. And they have this attitude, and this will be definitely Monday's discussion and surviving Matthew Leslie. They have this attitude that they are untouchable because we as a community have never held them accountable. Somebody would say, oh, well, I know that person's a thief. She's always stealing. Nobody's going to press charges. Nobody's going to do anything about it. If the person's arrested, well, we shouldn't name them. Okay. Um, Dean says there's so many women in this world for man to get the haunts from an underage child should be taken out to sea and dropped off and given a paddle and tell him to find his way back home. Dean, I sure hope that you tune in on Monday for that discussion because we're going to go through some of the messages and we're going to see some of the sickness that has been the slackness that has been allowed to go on in this, in this country. Deb says, girl done. People are never going to like you no matter what you do. And I think this is probably a good place to end. This isn't a popularity contest. Cayman Mall Road isn't about making friends, clearly. Someone asked me yesterday, why you? And I had to say to them, why not me? There are very few people in this community who would have taken the time to set up something like Cayman Mall Road to be of service to this community to the point where Every single time someone is robbed, every single time there's a break-in, something is stolen, something is lost, somebody has lost their dog, something, you know, somebody has lost their wallet, whatever. The first people that they actually come to now is Cayman Mall Road. We fulfill a void in this community, a service. And at least 11,000 of you are following this page and will see those types of things, right? Now, like I said, not everything you're going to like, not everything you're going to agree with. That's not what this is about. We are filling a void. And who else is going to do it? If I don't do it, you're not going to do it. Diane isn't going to do it. Amanda isn't going to do it. Nobody wants to do it. So I'm here to say that, yes, I'm here to do a dirty job and sometimes get my typing fingers a little bit dirty but it's a service, it's a passion to this community. So the fact that someone is maimed, does it mean that they should feel ashamed unless they're a pedophile? Because that's a whole different level. And if they have done nothing wrong, they will have their day in court. Any article that has ever gone up, they will have the opportunity to message us. We will put the information out there. This is a community-based news program. We will put that information in the public domain. When you're exonerated, Giselle, you're going to have your day in court, girlfriend. If that judge or jury finds you not guilty, we will gladly plaster that all over Cayman Mall Road with your beautiful photo the exact same way. And that's what it is. So let's go ahead and wrap up now, folks. I want to thank you very, very much for tuning in. I just felt like this was an issue that we had to address. If you're a little bit lost, like I said, you can go and have a look um, at the Cayman Mall Road news story on Giselle. You can have a look at the Cayman News Service one, um, what Giselle said there. You know what is so fascinating? The most popular topic, the most popular story in the Cayman Islands on Cayman Mall Road was not even about a Caymanian. Here's, here's the irony of the, the whole situation. It has, it has never been disclosed, and I think you can probably go on the website and see it for yourself, but it's about, remember that guy, Ryan Schroeder, he was arrested. The, um, he's working at Intertrust. He was arrested for drugs. And it was a big thing in town, and the drug people went, and the dogs and whatever. Over 20,000 people have looked at that particular story. And guess what? He contacts us, says, hey, my case was thrown out. It was dismissed, whatever. Not really thrown out, but basically they, they said, you got a drug problem. We're going to send you off for treatment. Um, we're going to give you a total discharge, right? So sometimes the court will say, okay, hi, Janelle. You've made a mistake, you know, we'll forgive you this one time, go get the help that you need. And he has asked us to remove that post of him because now he's in the States and he's trying to get a job and blah, blah, blah. And I said, 
How is that fair? Honestly, how is that fair? I'm not gonna remove any of the stories about other Caymanians who didn't even get a quarter of 20,000 plus views. So why would I remove your post? Who are you? What makes you special? Because you went to Cambridge and you had a nice cushy job at Intertrust, probably making at least 10 grand a month and you couldn't not engage in drug use and basically threw your life away? How am I to be, again, the subjective test? How am I to say, oh, wow, your case merits something special, but yet my Caymanians, when they get put up on there, I'm not going to use a subjective test to take it down. No, that's not how this works. It goes up and it stays up. If there's incorrect information out there, we have no problems correcting it. Chance, thank you so much for the positive comments. Um, Dean says, don't get, give a heck about who like you for what you do. Some has to do it in life. We know right from wrong and we have choices. Um, Kayla says, has your blog ever made you fear for your life? You know, <laughs> that, this is almost a totally separate discussion, Kayla, but a lot of people have this attitude that, um, oh, Sandra has to remember she has children and karma's a bitch, and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, listen, karma is an equalizer. We are all subjected to the same rules of the universe. In other words, good things happen to bad people. Bad things happen to good people every single day. There are good people who have never hurt a single soul, who die young, babies, who die immaturely. So when people throw out this whole thing about, oh, karma is going to get you, really? What's going to get you is that your actions have consequences. Kayla, I hope that the larger community in this country appreciates what Cayman Mall Road does. And the few little naysayers who have a, a problem with it or an attitude or whatever, like I said, they don't have to be on the website. They don't have to go to the Facebook page. You can actually block a Facebook page where you don't see anything that's posted up about that page. And you can just keep living your life. The truth is extremely important. And that's what we try to put out there. Whether it's Giselle, whether it's Tiffany, Conley, whatever. There's a saying that the truth will set you free. And I think that there is something to be said for that. Anyway, let's end it on that note, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in. When I say this was an amazing conversation, at one point we were pushing almost 200 people on the live stream event. I think that is absolutely fabulous. So listen, here's what we're doing. Mondays and Wednesdays, 7 p.m., we're going to have our live stream chats. We are going to be discussing all sorts of things. We will have guests on the program. Things are topical. Next week, Monday, we've already got the topic booked. It's called... Surviving Matthew Leslie. Prudence, thank you very much for the love. We appreciate it. Any issues in this community that you have that are of concern to you, whether it's your kids being mistreated in school, whether it is um, you know, something that's going on in your neighborhood, those are the topics that other people may not care about, but Cayman Mall Road cares about it. I have said it before, and I'm going to say it again. Cayman Mall Road is our passion not our paycheck. We're not making any money off of this. This isn't about money. This is about us providing a service that we are very, very passionate about to the community and to the people of the Cayman Islands. Please like and share our page. Obviously, we appreciate that. Uh, share this video. You know, have the discussion. We're going to be talking about some serious things. We've got some guests coming in. We do have you know, survivors of child sexual abuse who are going to be joining this program at some point. So like and share, keep the interaction going. Appreciate your comments. We've gone over 200 comments. Kayla, we'll definitely see you on Monday. Diane, good night. And it was an excellent live stream event. I thank you guys for, for participating. And you know what? At the end of the day, we are only going to continue to grow from strength to strength. Have a wonderful evening, guys, and I'll see you on Monday.